Did you ever notice that sometimes we use phrases without really thinking about what we're saying? I mean, we, we know what we're trying to get across to people, but we don't think about the idiom that we're using and where it came from. For example, we might say, I heard it straight from the horse's mouth. What in the world does that mean? Where does that one come from? Well, back in the day, when considering purchasing a horse, a buyer would want to know its age, and the most accurate way to do so was to look at its teeth. The person selling it might lie to you, but you could tell if it was the truth by looking in the horse's mouth yourself. This is also uh, the idea behind the idiom, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Because that one means it's rude if someone gives you a horse for a gift for you to immediately look in its mouth to tell how old and how good of a gift it is. Interesting, isn't it? You might say, there is more than one way to skin a cat. Well, that one's self-explanatory and gross. Kill two birds with one stone. Also, self-explanatory and gross. But have you ever heard, don't let the cat out of the bag? This one came across because centuries ago, piglets were sold in bags. And not so honest vendors, they might slip a cat into the bag instead of a pig because cats were much easier to come by. And they would sell you this pig and then take off before you had a chance to let the cat out of the bag. In other words, give away a secret. Today I want to take a look at something that we might often say and hear, but just like these idioms, it's also something that we don't quite get. You know, I feel like I tell you this almost weekly, but since Jesus thought it was the most important thing, it kind of makes sense that it comes up so often. If I were to ask you what are the two greatest and most important commands in Scripture, you would tell me, love God and love your neighbor. Mark 12.30 says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Yeah, this particular command to love your neighbor as yourself is actually found eight times in the Bible. Yeah, Leviticus 19.18, Matthew 19.19, Matthew 22.37, Mark 12.30, Luke 10.27, Romans 13.9, Galatians 5.14, and James 2.8. Woo! Yes, one time in the Old Testament and seven times in the New. And in case you were wondering, that is a lot. It is. And the fact that it was recorded in Leviticus means that this command has been around for over 3,000 years. When Jesus quotes in the New Testament, he isn't coming up with something new. Instead, he is quoting a command that has been around since Moses. I mean, when you look at the first Ten Commandments, uh, when you look at the Ten Commandments, the first three are all about loving God, aren't they? And what are the last seven about? Loving your neighbor. That's why if you focus your life on loving God and loving your neighbor, you will automatically be obeying all of God's commands. It's like some of those neat idioms that we sometimes use without really thinking about. Uh, love God, love your neighbor. Mm, got it. Do you? Listen to these verses one more time. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. Hooey, that is some serious love there. Wow, that is love with everything you've got. And the second part of it, love your neighbor as yourself. Not just love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Have you ever stopped for a minute to think that statement through? Because I think sometimes with that statement, our understanding of it is close, but no cigar. <laughs> yeah, that one came from uh, fairs. Before they started giving out stuffed animals as prizes, they gave out cigars. So when you were playing their game, you might come really close, but unless you succeed, you wouldn't get a prize cigar, close but no cigar. Yes, with love your neighbor as yourself, we are close, but no cigar. Why? Because it's not just love your neighbor. It's love your neighbor as yourself. We should love our neighbors with the same love that we love ourselves with, but that brings a whole new set of problems with it, doesn't it? Why? <laughs> well, to be frank, we're not very good at loving ourselves. I mean, think about it. 
Who is your biggest critic? You are. Who gets the most disappointed in you? You do. Who thinks you're overweight? Well, you think that. Who thinks that you're dumb? That's you as well. Who thinks that you're not good looking? Well, that would also be you. Who underestimates how much you are worth? I think you're starting to get the picture. The answer is almost always you. You are your biggest critic. Suicide rates in the United States has been on a steady rise. In 2021, 48,000 people died by suicide. 12.3 million seriously thought about it. 3.5 million made a plan. 1.7 million attempted it. We are a society who continues to dislike themselves more and more every year. And if we were to take this kind of love that we have for ourselves and transfer that onto other people, well, I'm not quite sure that's what Jesus would have told us to do if he knew that was the way we were loving ourselves. Because if we loved them like we loved us, well, then we'd be hypercritical of them. We would only notice their flaws. We would de be disappointed in them. We would never see their true potential. They would never be good enough for us. Why? Because that's what our love for ourselves is like. I'm serious. Think about it for a moment. How good are you at loving yourself? How good are you at seeing yourself through God's eyes? Do you praise God because you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Or do you curse him because he clearly messed up? How good are you at being appreciative of who God has created you to be? I can't tell you how many times I wish people could see themselves through my eyes. I find my wife to be the most amazing person I've ever met. Because of who she is, I am who I am. And I do my best to help her see herself like I see her. Well, on good days I do, on bad days not so much. My kids are some of the most fun, funniest, caring people I've ever had the privilege of knowing. But they don't see themselves nearly as wonderfully made as I see them. I wish that they could see themselves through my eyes. And God wishes the same thing for us. He wishes that we could see ourselves through his eyes. Because if we, we could look through them, then maybe we wouldn't see a broken screw-up anymore. But instead, a beautiful man or woman of God who is truly worth loving. Love your neighbor as yourself. In order to do that, first you've got to love yourself. And what does that mean? Does that mean we walk all around with giant heads turning our nose up at everyone because of how amazing we think we are? <laughs> Look at me, everyone. Of course not. No, it doesn't. But you, you don't have to shoot completely over to the other side either. In an effort to not be prideful, you don't have to go to a place where you have no pride. Loving yourself means that you see yourself how God sees you. It means that you see yourself as a work in progress, but as a beautiful work in progress. You see yourself as someone who still has a long way to go, but someone who has come so far. You see some of the bad qualities that could use some fixing, but you also see the good ones that make you special. Loving yourself means that you praise God because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Folks, if you want to follow Jesus' command to love your neighbor as yourself, then guess what? You first got to love yourself. You've been beating yourself up long enough, haven't you? You are an amazing person, and everybody else can see it. Don't you think it's about time that you open your eyes to what everyone else already sees? Your love cannot be offered to others until you are willing to offer it to yourself, plain and simple. Love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Let's get to loving, folks. But let's start by loving that one person who we've been criticizing long enough. And I know that this is easier said than done, but you are a chip off the old block. So don't cry over spilled milk. Step up your game. Put your money where your mouth is. 
put your nose to the grindstone, and throw caution to the wind. You are the best thing since sliced bread, so turn a deaf ear to that criticizing voice of yours and realize that you are the bee's knees. The ball is in your court, and I know that all that glitters isn't gold, but you certainly are, so start acting it. That was 12 idioms in a row. I better quit while I'm ahead. Have a great day. God bless. Take care. Hope to see you soon.